Instead of a one-size-fits-all for treatment, we're trying to individualize the treatment process. Uh, research has shown when you do that, they're getting more buy-in from the clients and it's impacting more of their um, the recidivism so that you know they're not committing future crimes. When a sexual assault case is processed in Jackson County, the probation officer works with their client to determine the appropriate level of supervisory action needed. This process is called sex offender leveling, and it helps determine which cases our community is directly notified about and which cases require specific intervention. So what is sex offender leveling? Sex offender leveling is a way to determine the risk that a, a convicted sex offender poses to the community. And if they're a higher risk individual, we post them on a website so the community can be notified who is a higher risk that lives near them. And who conducts the process? Uh, if they are sentenced to probation from the court, the local probation office will conduct that leveling. If they are being released from an institution, the parole board will conduct that leveling. And can a person challenge the level that they're put in? Yes. Uh, what will happen is that they will be presented with the risk tool that was uh, given to them to uh, determine their leveling. They can review that. The, if they're a good assessor, they will outline why they scored the way they did. Uh, the individual is given a form to write out why they believe they should be scored differently than what they were. And at that time, they'll have an administrative review. Uh, they'll have a hearings officer that will look at that and determine if they were uh, leveled appropriately or not. That hearings officer will all be also be trained in the uh, assessment tool that was conducted on the individual. What is the goal of sex offender supervision? The goal of sex offender supervision is to reduce recidivism in our clients so they do not commit future sex offenses. And so how does the sex offender leveling inform the type of supervision that a client receives? The leveling is only one aspect. Uh, the leveling is done by one assessment tool. We use that assessment tool already to level them, uh, but there's other tools we use as well. Uh, there's three, t three tools that we use to get an overall leveling for our own supervision leveling that's different from the uh, leveling that, that's conducted for the notification system. So when we get that score, we have a grid score that we put for what kind of supervision they will then receive. And what kind of training does a probation officer that's involved with the sex offender supervision get? Well, you have the standard uh, academy for every probation officer that has to go through. Uh, once you're on the sex offender unit, there's an additional, uh, uh, acad another academy you have to go through at DPSST. After that, you have ongoing training you have to do. There's a statewide uh, group that meets quarterly. As part of that, there's uh, one day that's just for training. Uh, also, there's other statewide networking groups for sex offender treatment providers that we attend to for trainings as well. And how has sex offender supervision changed over the last few years? In the last few years, I, um, in my opinion, we're going to, a, instead of a one-size-fits-all for treatment, we're trying to individualize the treatment process. Uh, research has shown when you do that, they're getting more buy-in from the clients, and it's impacting more of their um, the recidivism so that you know they're not committing future crimes. But uh, it seems, yeah, we're doing, trying to make it more uh, individualized for the person. Mm -hmm.